Hey everyone, so what's going on here? This is all a bit different, isn't it? Well, <laughs> something strange is happening at Digital Foundry. Last week, John showed us his retro PC attached to a CRT monitor. And well, things kind of snowballed from there. So here's the thing. CRT technology, decades in the making, it evolved so much over so many years. And well, at the turn of the millennium, things just sort of stopped. We moved on to flat panels. And based on what John has seen with his experiments, and based on what I'm seeing right here with this monitor, the legendary Sony FW900, I think maybe we've missed something here. We've, we've kind of turned our back on what is an exceptional technology for gamers. So FW900 here, it's a progressive scan high definition CRT monitor, 24 inches there on the diagonal. And well, the picture quality that you get with it is absolutely amazing. And well, here's the thing. A couple of days ago, I was talking with John about the new control patch and we were discussing how the performance has improved in the new patch. But the conversation quickly veered to just how amazing control looks on a CRT monitor. And here's the thing, you don't need massively high resolutions to get an incredible picture. And that means that we can actually run the game fully maxed on RTX technology, use all of those features and still get a phenomenal image with phenomenal motion resolution quality that far exceeds even a 4K OLED. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, something a little different for a DF Direct. I'm gonna attempt to show you the majesty of the FW900 at work and, uh, you know, get some shots of how this vintage 2003 monitor looks, the, you know, the strengths and the weaknesses. Let's just say that it's rather large in terms of its depth. And uh, yes, I'm going to go back to that conversation I had with John during our control recording session. All of this stuff never made it into the actual edit, but it's here for you now, so enjoy. I was kind of surprised to see that the PS4 version was having issues because, you know, that's the version that you can't really afford to get wrong. It's the one with the, by far the biggest install base. So that would be my target platform. So it's surprising that it shipped in that state. There's a little bit more, though, for us to talk there about, is, though, yeah, I suppose. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> this is completely non-patch related and it's just indulging what is swiftly becoming a bit of a fetish. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah yeah so right okay let's let's sort of pitch the story here which is that you have been playing games on your retro pc and for the ultimate retro experience you set up a crt i think you spent 10 euros on a 19 inch sony is that right yeah that's right it's a sony trinitron uh it's uh, like 16 years old or something uh but i've played a lot okay. of retro pc games on that and then i thought you know what Let's hook this up to my main PC as well. And there were some revelations there. <laughs> so Amazing. One of, so what, I will say this. So the, these, these monitors, they're pretty old now, right? Um, I've been kind of geeking out over them for the last couple days here. Uh, but I feel like somehow PC CRTs are only just now reaching the point where we can truly take advantage of them at their absolute best. These things support very high refresh rates. Uh, but PCs back yeah. when CRTs were in use really couldn't deliver frame rates at those high refresh rates. So, but now you can. And because of the way CRTs handle resolutions, you can also lower your resolution a lot. I will say on this monitor, playing a game at something like 1280 by 960, I think it looks better than uh, my 4K LCD. It just, it just does. It's it's cleaner, smoother, nicer. Uh, it just There's no motion blur. And so that's why I decided let's load up control on there. And so with Control, I decided to just play it at 1024 by 768. That's under 12, that's under 720p. That seems like that would be an awful resolution, but it looks gorgeous on a CRT. And as a result, I was able to run it at 120 frames per second, which now was locked. So it was very, very stable. And I was able to max out all of the ray tracing features. So full ray traced, 120 frames per second, on a CRT uh, with perfect motion, you know, no LCD blur at all. This is just about the smoothest thing you could possibly lay eyes on. I will say 
high refresh rate on a CRT looks better than every single LCD ever made, period, in motion. And I stand by that. I don't care if you're using black frame insertion <laughs> or any sort of like ultra low motion blur. It doesn't, it doesn't match up. I long su suspected this, but it's absolutely 100% true. If you've not seen a CRT in a while, uh, well, I mean, I would say go look at it. But at the same time, if you do, you might not be able to go back to your LCD. <laughs> Which is the problem, because I saw what you've been doing with uh, CRTs and I had to go nuclear. So I spent considerably more than 10 euros on the, the legendary Sony Trinitron FW900, which is a 16 by 10 CRT monitor. It uh, can handle uh, resolutions up to, I believe, uh, twen uh, 2560 by 1600. Yeah, so higher than 1440p. Higher than 1440p, and you can go lower and run at extreme uh, refresh rates and uh, the footage you've been seeing here has been controlled on my system uh, with a 2080 Ti running at the specs you see on the screen now and I agree with you that uh, <laughs> we're going to have to do a separate video on this but control just looks amazing on, on, on this screen and um, everything does. <laughs> everything does. It's, it's revelatory. And you know the, the point is that there's been a rush towards uh, higher resolutions you know 4k and whatnot but sample and hold which is the way LCDs mm -hmm. work is such that you lose motion resolution to the point where it can go down to like 400 lines which uh, CRT doesn't do that yeah and over the years L LCD manufacturers have attempted to offset this especially gaming PC monitors they've got ultra high refresh rates they've got techniques to reduce blur I've seen all those, and in my mind I was thinking, wow, they're actually getting close to CRT quality. It looks really good, but it's yeah. not. <laughs> if you go back, you really see that, no, we're still a long way away from actually matching that. You just, like, even if you're playing at, like, 240 hertz on a monitor, on an LCD monitor, that sample and hold blur is just a killer. If you strafe left and right in front of something, you'll see it big time, and again, even using... Uh, you know, black frame insertion and other similar techniques, it gets so much closer, but it's still not there. And it's it's just like, and not only that, it's the way resolutions are handled. Uh, you know, the fixed pixel structure of an LCD, it's just going to, you if you're not at that resolution, uh, you're going to have upscale blur. This is the only reason why when we talk about resolution, when you say, oh, 900p on a 1080p screen doesn't look great, the only reason you would ever say that is because you're displaying 900p upscale to 1080p on a panel with that native resolution yeah. or higher. And then when it moves... And it moves and it blurs. <laughs> so you have a blurry image that blurs when it moves. If you display native 1600 by 900 on a CRT, it will look razor sharp and beautiful you can display any low resolution you can put 640 by 480 on there you're going to get scan lines but it's going to look good mm -hmm. and it's just this ability to display all these different resolutions where they all look great while eliminating all motion blur with excellent black levels it's just i can't believe how like how much we've lost by moving to lcd yeah and it's all been kind of, you know, the, the, the push for GPU power has all been poured into resolution where with a CRT, you can actually pour it back into features and still get a, yeah. a an image that looks uh, very, well, you know, it's going to be subjective, but it does hold up against LCD spectacularly so. Exactly. You don't need 4K when you're running a CRT. You just don't. And you can pour that right back into all those effects. I mean, again, I was playing Quake 2 RTX at insane frame rates. Uh, no problem. It just looked unbelievable on there. And I'm getting excited because it's just, it's one of those things where I knew it was different, but I didn't realize. I, I mean, I've been playing on crt televisions for a long time but going back to this monitor and it's just it's it's a revelation yeah we're gonna have to do a, a separate video about this because we could be on this for hours <laughs> yeah yeah we could go on and on <laughs> uh what i will do though is show you this shot which shows the depth of the sony fw 900 oh boy to say that technological innovation has improved things in many regards and the <laughs> depth of displays is certainly one of them. This thing has got a 600 millimeter by a 550 millimeter footprint. Woof. So it's basically a big square blob block, if you like. <laughs> How about that 45 inch Sony I found that they sold back in the day that weighs uh, 440 pounds or over 200 kilograms? 
it's it's a it's a monster it's amazing <laughs> awesome i think the point is though that um you know alex's video on control he was talking about having to make trades on ray tracing features uh, in order to run at decent resolutions. But I'm assuming you were running control pretty much maxed, is that right? Yeah, I maxed it out. I was just at 1024 by 768, like I said, and uh, my PCU was just blasting through it, no problems. Mm. And uh, MSAA also really helps CRTs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, look, we're, we're spoiling a future video here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will say, though, with control specifically, I noticed some of the techniques they use for rendering with the AA and the, the blur and the TAA, all of that stuff makes a lot of sense on an LCD, but suddenly you feel like you don't really need it on a CRT anymore. Uh, I've noticed this a lot with a lot of these post effects. They're very much designed to improve image on a flat panel, but it's not as necessary on a tube. But we'll talk more about this in the future. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've just spoiled the entire future video, but I'm, I'm, let's go with it. <laughs> you can edit some. Okay, look, let's round this one up. So there you go. Control running on PC on the FW900 CRT here, and it is absolutely phenomenal. So this is just the beginning of the story. John and I are very excited about this vintage technology and we're going to be doing more of a deep dive into CRTs in the 21st century and what it means for current generation gaming. Uh, but let's just say there's a really exciting story here and uh, yeah, I think you're going to be surprised by some of the findings. But that's all from us for now. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this Digital Foundry Direct. Ring the bell for instant notifications whenever a new DF video drops. And if you love what we do and you want to support the team more directly, then please consider the DF Patreon. It makes such a huge difference in allowing us to tell the stories we want to tell in an era where YouTube advertising revenue simply doesn't pay the bills. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this one, if indeed you did, and well, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.